All right, well, we're back from our break again, the new tape. And um, as we were finishing, I just want to remind you again uh, the idea of GUI Chapman Stern, which pointed this out, and then which is now quite reproducibly noted by a number of experimenters, and that the concentration of ions, electrolyte ions, in the electrolyte solution can have an effect on the potential at the interface. As I said, this Phi 2 effect, so called Phi 2 effect, is an important consideration when making electron transfer rate constant measurements because what you see is that uh, in order for an electron transfer to occur, we have to bring our molecule to the electrode surface. And that generally is going to be at the, basically the solvent radius away, a solvated ion radius away from the interface. At that point, the potential will be not the potential drop from the solution to the metal, but the potential drop from the phi 2 to the metal. And so the potential would be less than you would expect in that consideration. As we decrease the concentration of electrolyte, that concentra the phi tube becomes even smaller because more of the potential drop is now in the diffuse layer outside the electrode surface. Um, the diffuse layer, depending on the concentration, can be not insubstantial. It can be from 10 to the minus 3. Uh, what do I have here? 10 to the minus, that's not right. 10 to the minus 3 uh, centime uh, micro, uh, centimeters to 10 nanometers in size. In other words, it can be quite extensive depending on the amount. Now, the very low, the very large, if you start right, would be very low dilute concentrations. Uh, but if we go to uh, even 1 millimolar concentrations, the diffuse double layer extends out 100 nanometers or so from the solution, from the electrode interface, and the Phi 2 effect becomes easily noted. Uh, and so this is another reason why you would often prefer to use high concentrations of supporting electrolytes in solution, because at high concentrations, the Phi 2 effect will not be a problem uh, in prints in general, and it will be relatively constant. As we drop the concentration of our supporting electrolyte, now the <coughs> potential at the interface is variable. And it varies with ion concentration, which is not ideal. The paper that I handed out for discussion next week has a discussion of some, some of these effects. And you'll be able to uh, see some of the effects that changing concentration has. All right. Well, again, the GCS theory is a sort of an idealized interface, re, interfacial region, and we had some ideal, some pretty ideal electrochemical data to compare it to. But in many cases, the curves that we see with the um, in experimental conditions for, say, the surface tension versus potential, are not really very close to an ideal parabolic shape. For example, although the shape for sodium fluoride is nicely parabolic, what we see is that the shape for ions like uh, potassium iodide and potassium chloride, or sodium iodide and sodium chloride, are not parabolic. In fact, what you see is that the point of zero charge shifts a little bit. And this more positive side of the uh, parab parabolic curve is actually shifted in a little bit, so we lose the symmetric shape of the thing. KF and, and sodium fluoride are both situations in which the fluoride ion and the potassium ion are not specifically absorbed. So in those cases, they, because they're not really stuck to the electrode surface at any point, they actually give real, really good symmetrical curves like you'd expect. However, the iodide and the chloride now can be specifically absorbed. And that causes the deviation it, you see at the positive side. As we go to more positive potentials, the more strongly 
absorb they are to the interfacial, interfacial region. So usually cations, small alkali metal cations are not a problem, but if we go to other sorts of cations that are often used actually, uh, it turns out that the opposite effect is seen. If we go to say KCl and compare that to a molecule that's uh, tetraethyl ammonium um, chloride, tetraethyl ammonium chloride, uh, TEACL would be a, a abbreviation for that. You notice again the tetraethyl ammonium ion causes the in this case, now the more negative side of the surface tension potential curve to be shifted. That suggests that now the potassium, because the potassium ion is not specifically absorbed, but the tetraethyl ammonium ion is specifically absorbed. It's stuck to the electrode surface. <clears throat> so we can think of it in this way. We've got now the outer Helmholtz plane with our ions like potassium ion, which is a small small ion. It's got a solvated, a solvation sheath of water molecules around it. It's got a layer of ion dipoles. In this case, solvent dipoles. The water is going to be stuck onto the negatively charged electrode surface. But then we can also have cations stuck to the surface. Now we talked about anions being stuck to the surface, but now because tetraethyl ammonium is this large, physically large cation, it really has very little likelihood that there's going to be a significant amount of solvation around it. It's not, it's so big that there's not a lot of charge density to that ion. And so it's much more likely to directly attach to the, to the molecule without the solvation sheath. And um, similar, Similar things happen uh, in this case. Now, the, for a negatively charged species, negatively charged electrodes, the chloride ions would not be specifically absorbed, but if we went to a positively charged electrode, the chloride ions would also be there. So in this particular case, the anions would be out in solution. And the cations would also be, some would be specifically absorbed, some would be non-specifically absorbed, and then there would be a, a layer of water dipoles at the interface. Okay. Nothing that can happen when we have things absorbed on the surface is if we have a neutral species. Uh, if we look at the electrocapillary curve for hydrogen chloride, HCl, or hydrochloric acid, if we put in some uh, neutral molecule, such as say N-butanol, the capillary curve, electrocapillary curve becomes quite different. And right here at the, near the PZC, we see uh, uh, the curve sort of flattens out. And the idea here is that the butanol is absorbed to the electrode interface, and that means that the capacitance is less than it would otherwise be at that particular point. Now, it turns out that because the only near the PZC can the butanol really have enough energy to absorb to the surface. In order to absorb, it actually has to knock off some of the water dipoles on the surface. So at the PZC, because there's, or and near the PZC, because there's very little charge on the metal, the dipoles are weakly bound to the surface. And so at that point, the butanol can actually get in there and, and stick to it changing the surface tension. On the other hand, as we go to more positively charged or more negatively charged electrodes, the butanol can no longer really knock off those dipoles. They're much more strongly attracted to that surface under those conditions. Okay. I'll just uh, stop here for today for the 
notes and then we'll continue tomorrow, next time, finish up chapter 12. And uh, we have another set of notes that we'll also talk about that's related to chapter 12 too.